Hello everyone and welcome to Andy Davo's Guide to Chaos Chosen in Blob All 3. This guide video is going to cover loads of different stuff and it's going to start with an introduction to all the players. Uh, then I'm going to go and talk about how to level those players up to get the most out of them and all your different options there. I'm then going to go and talk to you about rosters and the different starting rosters you've got available. Then I'm going to talk about uh, both defensive and offensive setups, moving into overall game strategy and how you might want to go around playing the team. And then I'm going to close out with some inducements, options, in terms of what you might need to do and what inducements to take and what ones to avoid. Looking at the Chaos Chosen team overall, uh, why would you want to play Chaos Chosen? So Chaos Chosen are one of the best teams in the game from a skill access point of view. They can build a massively diverse team. You've also got the ability uh, to be a very high strength combat team uh, with a strength five player, four strength four players, and then all of the supporting Strength 3 players can also blitz on Strength 4 because they've got horns. Unfortunately, though, they do come with a couple of weaknesses. They are a team that starts with no proper starting skills. And as such, they will struggle to move the ball around. And they've got no kind of thrower type player. So um, they are limited to either a, uh, well, limited to a running game. Right, let's dive in and have a look at the actual uh, team specifically. Okay, Chaos Chosen have changed slightly from Blood Bowl 2, so if you uh, are coming over from the previous game, then there is a slight change here, and that is the big guy element. You are allowed to pick one of the following three big guys. We can have the Minotaur, which you will remember from the previous game if you played that. Uh, and now, making their debuts, we've got the Chaos Ogre and the Chaos Troll. Earlier in the series, I covered Chaos Renegades, and they were allowed to choose three big guys from four. Uh, this team differs. It's now one from three. Uh, the Chaos Troll is the cheapest of the three. Unfortunately, I think it is probably the worst of the three because although it's only 115k, it comes with really stupid. So really it needs a babysitter to do anything. The Ogre is the middle price one. And I think in a developed team, the Ogre is the best best choice because it will perform the roadblock type function. And then there is the Minotaur from the previous game. Uh, the Minotaur comes with Frenzy, which is great for knocking stuff over. Uh, and it also has horns, so you can blitz on strength six. Really, you're picking from these two. Uh, I'm going to hire the Ogre first of all. So the Ogre starts with um, normal Ogre skills. In fact, there's absolutely nothing different here. Uh, so really, we're going to talk about leveling up the player uh, specifically. Uh, the general skill that you definitely want to take for an Ogre is Block. That is a super strong skill. And there's a choice here. Really, you're either taking Block as its first skill... And then you're going to go into the strength tree and we're going to take guard as its first skill. Or you're going to do it the other way around. You're going to use the ogre as a roadblock in much the same way I talked about it in the troll in the orc video. Uh, or the troll or the ogre in the chaos renegade video. They're the same function and they perform the same role. This guy is there to stand there and get in the way. It is reasonable at low team value while your team is building that you actually use this as your blitzer. And so I see a lot of people will take block as their very first skill. If you continue to use this player as your Blitzer, you might also want to step into the Mutations tree and pick up Claws. Because then you've got a Block Mighty Blow Claw player for not a lot of star player points. Uh, and then he is genuinely a frightening person. Uh, after that, you definitely do want to step into uh, the Guard uh, area. And I think Guard and Stand Firm would round this player out uh, as a very nice player with four skills. If you are able to add any extra skills, then let's jump into the Agility tree. And as I've talked about with all the other big guys... Defensive is an amazing addition uh, at this point. And with Chaos, because mutations are on a primary, um, you're only adding one or possibly two double skills. This player's not that expensive uh, for what it would bring to the party. So I think that this is the best player, uh, best way of building it, which is block, claw, mighty blow, guard, defensive. If you want to go a slightly different route and make it slightly less combat orientated and slightly more uh, control, then look at dodge as a great skill. Uh, because then you can take block, dodge, stand firm, guard. That's four of your five primary skills that you're likely to get. And we've got one skill left. And at that point, we could either go something really funky like diving tackle, which would be uh, a lot of fun. Or you could take for a little bit more reliability, you could take pro so that the player will actually do as it's told a lot more uh, of the time. So you've got your player yeah, just, just being a, a useful player. From a characteristics point of view, I would strongly avoid characteristics. And I would also probably avoid randoming levels. Uh, because unless you've got oodles of time to build the perfect ogre, randoming levels probably is a bad idea. So the Chaos Troll has the same skill accesses, so a lot of the stuff that I've just covered for the ogre would stand true. Uh, I do think that Pro is probably a skill that you would like to lean into, 
uh, much quicker because the troll going stupid because it's not got a babysitter it is really annoying if it gets left behind. So Pro is a great skill on the troll. You could put claws on it. I, I would just avoid this player altogether, generally speaking. It's just, just get, if you're going to go big guy, get the ogre. Uh, I don't think the troll adds enough. If you're going to use a troll, you're probably using it as some form of roadblock, in which case guard stand firm, leave it alone. That uh, would be my advice. To cover off the Minotaur, the Minotaur is the probably the highest damage output of the players. So we'll just jump into this one and explain why. The, the reason the Minotaur has so much more damage output is because it's going to get four block dice or six block dice every time you're throwing blocks because of the frenzy, uh, as long as it doesn't turn over. So you're more likely to knock stuff over. You're more likely to generate star player points. And therefore, that engine keeps going. Early skills you could take if you're blitzing with it uh, is you don't need to take blocks so much. Uh, you want to jump into the mutation tree and take claws. And you want to jump into um, the strength tree and take juggernaut. Claw Juggernaut for an extra 40 team value to make this guy a super you know, death machine makes a lot of sense. Notice I've stayed away from guard uh, initially, and that's because you are absolutely, if you're playing the Minotaur, he is your blitzer. He's not a blitzer that you then replace with a better blitzer in the Beastman. He is just your blitzer. So in that case, you need to lean into those things um, and claws and probably Juggernaut or claws and block uh, are your two first starting skills. Once you've got those skills, then I actually really like I really like taking pro because pro then means that when he doesn't blitz, you've got a chance that he does and you don't want to lose your blitz. It's actually super important that you keep your blitz on the table and, and keep it working. And then, uh, and only then, would I can then consider taking guard on the Minotaur uh, because, yeah, he is blitzing for you. Now, we'll go and look at the rest of the team. Uh, there are only actually two positionals for Chaos which means that um, both of these positionals and certainly the Beastmen need to form a wide variety of different roles. The Chosen Blockers, these are four of them you're allowed. You will be taking all four as quickly as possible, if not taking four from the get-go. Uh, and they are Movement 5, Strength 4, Agility 3+, plus, so you can dodge with them. They can also do limited ball work, which is great. They can't pass though, so you're not going to be vanity passing with them anytime soon. But they are AV 10+, plus, which is great. See here, they've got a completely blank slate. So you can build them any way you like. They are your players like Biggins and other sort of strength four big blob things. They're going to get stuck into the into the fight. So core skills for them, block, guard, mighty blow. Once you've got those skills, you might want to then start branching off into other things. Uh, if we look at mutations, claws, while it's not as powerful in the pre as, as in the previous version, because claws and mighty blow don't stack um, with the same synergy, having a couple of claws players does make a lot of sense. Uh, and adding a bit of firepower to this team uh, is very useful. Other than that, I think uh, in the agility tree, defensive is now uh, a super strong skill, uh, as I've talked about previously. I think you could take dodge on them to make them super annoying and keep them upright. Uh, and also, I really like stand firm. Um, and I like a little bit of grab as well. Uh, I think uh, being able to control where you put your opponents uh, is super powerful. As for randoming, uh, if you're going to random anything, I think you probably want to come into this skill tree and random uh, in the strength tree if you're going to do it. It is potluck. Um, if you can get a great cheap skill like guard or mighty blow or stand firm, then then great for you. Other than that, you, you're going to be starting to recycle these players. And they can be a bit of a pain to level because they don't have block and they're only movement five. So scoring touchdowns on them is going to be tricky. So be careful when you're real randoming. Uh, it's not the way I would do it. It's just if you've got lots and lots of time, you might might consider it. Uh, as for a characteristic, movement five up to six doesn't really make a difference. So as movement's one of the most common, I would avoid that. While it would be lovely to get strength on a warrior, it's only a one in 16 roll. So there's no point looking at it there. If you did get an agility four warrior, you would have to go away from the block guard mighty blow route and build into something a little bit funky. It would let you do something like two heads, tackle, block, dodge, which would be fun. And it would be different and it'd be off meta. Uh, so you could try that. Uh, it's not as strong as just staying on meta and taking block guard mighty blow and stand firm, I think. But it, it would be fun. Let's look at beastmen. You're gonna you're gonna be playing with probably seven, eight, nine beastmen in your team once you've got a fully stacked out team. Uh, you'll certainly start with six or seven of them. And as such, there are several different types of player that you need to to run with. Uh, you need a ball carrier. You're gonna need one or two players that can punch things, uh, killers. You're gonna need some support players. You're going to need some line of scrimmage players and you're going to need someone with some sideline control slash utility. So there's five different roles straight off the bat and therefore talking about this player is going to take a little while. First of all, the ball carrier. 
So what do we want on our ball carrier? Well, movement is actually a really strong thing. So oddly enough, you might want to start saving for a characteristic fairly early on in this player's uh, career because getting up to movement seven or even potentially movement eight is amazing. Agility is also absolutely amazing on this because being able to dodge and move and pick up the ball, super helpful. So if you've got a movement or an agility, that's great. Strength on your ball carrier, while nice, doesn't form its primary goal. So you might take it. And if you've got a strength really early on, you just need to move it into a different career path rather than keep it on ball carrier. Avoid passing. It's terrible. You shouldn't be passing the ball. Uh, and armor value I would also avoid. Let's assume that you didn't pick up, a, uh, you didn't go for a characteristic and you're just taking normal skills. What do you want? Well, ball carriers need to be able to move. They need to be able to dodge. They need to be able to pick the ball up. Therefore, extra arms uh, is one of the two skills and two heads is the other one. And uh, two heads lets you dodge. It says that on tooltip, it's plus one to dodging. So you're now effectively dodging on a two plus. And your extra arms mean that you're picking up uh, with a plus one or in some act, uh, catching a handoff on a plus one. So that gives you an, a two plus to catch or pick up the ball. Two heads, extra arms are skills that you want. And then we need to come into the general, general tree and we want block. And then we want uh, sure hands. So that would mean that we've got uh, a player that's less likely to get knocked over. We've got someone who can reroll picking up the ball and then we can dodge away if we're marked and we can also pick the ball up off the floor reliably with extra arms. That's probably your first four core skills. And yeah, after that, it's adding a flavor skill uh, on top. Um, some people will come into this uh, agility tree and take dodge for extra defensive ability. And also that dodge synergizes with uh, the two heads. So now you can dodge reliably. That's absolutely fine. Uh, some people will want to take that extra level because we have five to play with, remember. Then you want to take the uh, extra movement. Uh, and some people will want to take something like uh, on the ball so you can go and fetch the ball more reliably at the start. These are all fine and it's preference in terms of which one you might want to go with. And just a point, I am aware that there are six skills in Blood Bowl. However, um, you're unlikely to be able to get to that last skill. So... Um, I always think of it as five level ups realistically. The next type of player you want to build is a killer. So you're going to need at least two of, well, you're going to need two of these. Um, and what those sort of players are, uh, just enforcers that cause prob uh, cause damage. So block, tackle, claws, and then in the primary tree here, mighty blow. Once you've got those four core skills, that's brilliant. Um, and I think the fifth primary skill should be frenzy because then whatever you're punching is more likely to get knocked over. And so you're actually applying that claw mighty blow combo onto your opponent. Because if you don't knock them over, they don't care. Gone are the days of piling on. So that's fine. Uh, and therefore frenzy does fill that uh, that other void. If you do get to actually get to an, a, an extra skill because you're knocking stuff over and killing it so reliably, then I think juggernaut is your, your final skill pick uh, on this player. That's You want two of those and I would actually build them in the same way. Although I pick the skills in a slightly different order. I think you go block, tackle, mighty blow, claw on one. And then you go block, mighty blow, claw, tackle on the other. And then add frenzy where you see fit. Um, probably though a fifth skill. Next we need to do some support players. So those sort of players are allow, uh, are there to allow other people to throw blocks. Um, block guard, block guard, extra arms. Uh, br brilliant combos. Block guard, stand firm. Also very strong. Um, but the key, key threat phrase there is block guard. Add a few block guard goats in. It allows your, your team to be able to fight more and it allows your team to be able to do more. It's also worth considering just taking a couple of players to two heads so you can reliably reposition your team and you're not stuck when you're based uh, on three pluses causing early turn turnovers and your opponent just to walk past you. Um, I think now that the Chaos team overall have moved away from a absolute combat orientated kill things meta to now you need to coach Chaos properly to do well. And that means that you should consider just a few, maybe three or four, uh, two head players, maybe even only two or three, uh, to get the best out of this team so that you can constantly be blitzing and blocking where you want and you're picking your fights. And those that, that spare skill probably sits really nicely on a utility player. Next skill types are the line of scrimmage goats. Well, for me, wrestle is a great line of scrimmage skill as I've covered in previous guide videos because it drags your opponent to the floor. It also makes quite nice uh, as a safety later in the drive. So I would actually take two wrestle goats straight away. I think they're great. Um, if they do got second skills, wrestle and guard, although the synergy sounds a bit weird. Um, guard is just great later in the drive. Wrestle is also really strong. And a third skill, probably tackle. 
um, so that if you do need to knock something over, you've got some spare wrestle tackle players. And then we need to think about players that can also cause damage in here, although annoyingly in the agility tree, it's a secondary skill, uh, a sneaky get dirty player. You need to be rostering a minimum of a dirty player on this team. And ideally it's a sneaky get dirty player so that you can start fouling the big dirty targets on your opponent's team um, as quickly as possible. You do need at least one of these players. So make sure you level a sneaky get dirty player or a dirty player sneaky get depending on your preference. Um, as quickly as possible. Okay, the final type of player is the sideline control slash utility player. And there are actually two different versions of this. So the sideline control player is nice and easy to build. Uh, that one, we need to take Frenzy fairly early on. And then we want to take Juggernaut. And uh, we want Tackle uh, back in the general tree. And then Mutation, we might want to consider two heads so we can actually get him into position. Uh, I love this player from a surfing point of view. And I think they're super helpful. This player now is kind of covered also by the killers. So you might end up not building one of these players at all. Uh, if you're going to build an early frenzy on one of your uh, killer players, it's up to you. you. You will need a frenzy player. And I think you should get a frenzy fairly early on because it allows you to control the pitch a lot more. And Chaos are much more of a control team now than they were a kill team. There is, however, one other type of super interesting player that you can build. And they are the, uh, the, the leap very long legs um, type players. So we can get plus one on jump tests and very long legs plus leap in here. And if we can then add an agility point because we get an agility increase when we were fishing for our ball carrier, then this is a super interesting player because it blitzes on strength four. It's probably not something that's going to work on a two plus every time, but leap long legs, uh, wrestle tackle agility is an absolutely amazing player if you ever get the look to, to do that. In Blood Bowl 2, I never really got round to, I never got a agility increase on the first level up and then a double skill on my second level up to build this player. However, with Chaos now not needing uh, to, to fish out uh, for double skills because they're just secondaries, they just cost more, then uh, I will be fishing for some characteristics on a couple of players fairly early on. And if I hit an agility increase, I'm going to be hard pushed to look past this as an option because it just opens up an entirely different world of playing Blood Bowl. There is a final, final way of playing this team, which is that if you do fish out a movement increase and you somehow manage to get a second movement increase, now we're into the realms of movement eight. And movement eight does absolutely allow us to score some semi-reliable one-turn touchdowns. And with that, I think you need to be fishing into the agility tree uh, for sidestep. And I also think you then want to come in here and be looking at two heads uh, because... That means that you can dodge through someone's backline if they set up a, a horrible backline against you. And that is a super strong player for scoring extra one turns. This is a high team value only type player. It's not someone I would initially build. But if you were going to play 40, 50, 60 games with this team and you were going to get to that sort of team value point, then Chaos are the ultimate toolbox team. You can have one of everything. This is another one of those types of players that you should certainly invest into. Uh, and then you could get a lot of fun out of them as well. That should cover everything on the uh, Beastman team. And um, I will see you in the next section. Thank you. Right, let's talk rosters. As usual, I've got three rosters for you, all themed around something slightly different. So let's dive in. Roster number one uh, is built as the standard Chaos roster. And this, for me, is the strongest of the Chaos rosters straight out the gate. And in fact, it's a carbon copy of Blood Bowl 2. It's all four war warriors. It's goats down to 11. And it gives you three rerolls. The reason this is the strongest roster is because uh, you start with no ball carrying skills and you start with no block uh, skills. So you are going to use team rerolls on just doing basic actions like blocking um, and picking up the ball. Therefore, having all three rerolls makes a lot of sense. There isn't v a viable way of getting to four rerolls, but if you really wanted to, you could play with an all goat team, which would be terrible, but you could probably get to four rerolls at that point uh, and some dedicated fans. I'm not including it in the roster guide because I think this is the flat best of the default roster builds. And therefore, this is the one I'm recommending. The next one we've got is the second roster. This is if you really want to take a big guy and you want to try and keep your four warriors. So that this is a higher strength variant of the, the previous roster. Uh, notice to get that in, we've had to sacrifice a reroll. This, I think, if you could reliably get a concession win at the beginning for some reason or you thought there was a much bigger skill differential between you and your opponent, you could maybe get away with this roster um, because it's so much stronger than, it, than almost all the other rosters that are out there. The downsides, of which there are two. Number one, it's only running two rerolls. 
That is a considerable problem. Three rerolls on a rookie Chaos team, I think, is considerably too light. And two rerolls is just damn right asking for trouble. This will not be a consistent roster. While sometimes you'll make it work, if you tried it 10 times in a row, you would definitely run into uh, problems at least three or four times. You're playing with a Chaos Troll. It's by far the worst of the three big guys. What on earth we're hiring a Chaos Troll for, I don't know. Um, but if you want all of the big strong things, this is realistically the only way to do it. If you want to swap the troll out and put in either an ogre or a minotaur, it's going to cost you another reroll. And at that point, one reroll chaos is just reckless. Uh, and I cannot put any form of recommendation into it. Uh, I'm struggling to justify this one, if I'm honest. The next one is the chosen roster number three. And this roster is probably my second favorite roster because it does have three rerolls, it does have a big guy, and it comes with two blockers. So here you could play with this roster, and I think I think that's okay. Um, if you wanted to, you could drop, um, I'll make a, an amendment, let's fire a reroll right now. Um, we'll also then go into this goat and we'll fire this goat. And then we will now look to hire uh, a Chaos Dwarf, uh, Chaos Chosen Blocker. And we'll also step up two extra dedicated fans. And so there are two variants of this roster. There's the two rerolls, three Chaos Warriors and the better big guy with three fans. And the three, that, that works because you're now making money and that means you can go and buy your third reroll really quickly, probably after game two or game three, depending on how the games went. I still think it's more risky than playing roster one, um, but either of the two rosters I've just gone over might work, might work. I, I don't think you've got a lot of variance when it comes to Chaos rosters. I think you need to start with four warriors. You should start with seven goats. You then put your apothecary in and then you add the big guy that you want uh, by saving for another three, four, five games after that and putting that player in there. For me, I would go the Ogre. And actually, um, my considered opinion now <clears throat> and the way I'm going to play Chaos the first time is I'm going to start with this roster here. I'm then going to add the Apothecary game one. And then I'm going to hire a 12th player, which is going to be the Ogre. And I'm going to do that. If a Goat then dies, I won't replace it and I'll be playing with 11 players. But I will be playing with the highest strength team that I can possibly put out. And I think that this roster will have a lot of people um it'll cause a lot of problems in ladder i think i also think in league play it'd be a lot of fun um and then at tournament play uh, i also think it's got a lot of a lot of legs as well so that's my uh, considered opinion on rosters take this roster and don't try and deviate from it <laughs> till the next section thank you right let's dive into some formations with chaos chosen uh, first of all we're going to kick off as usual with the offensive setups uh, and this is your baseline and on the here, we've got the the sort of the, the T-shape with six and seven being your players, uh, your ball carrier, uh, and six out of the two, actually, seven being your ball carrier, sorry, and six being the player that you're going to want to use to uh, as your sort of enforcer of, in case someone gets through. And it's important that you keep uh, at least someone back as a sweeper so that you've got the ability to uh, control uh, and support number seven as he gets towards your front line. You are most vulnerable while your team is split and you are most safe once your team gets put back together again. So your goal in the first two turns is to go and fetch the ball with number seven and hide it kind of where my cursor is about now. Um, so I've actually set number seven back slightly uh, as usual. We, If we are using the Ogre, the Ogre is probably throwing a three dice block towards the end of the turn and hopefully blocking into the person that's in stood in front of number two on the opposition line. And then we're using Chaos Warriors uh, or chosen blockers as they're called now, uh, to block diagonally. I have on both sides left the other two chosen warriors, one here and one here. That means your line is a little bit stronger than usual uh, and it's more difficult for your opponent to blitz through and needs more resources uh, if he wants to run through it. I don't advise doing anything other than this. You know, that's a really weak problem because now number 11 is too easy to deal with. So you want to be going with sort of this sort of formation. And if the ball is kicked deep and if you're playing against a fast team, do not be worried about running people diagonally back uh, to go and support the ball carrier so that over the first turn, you build a cage and you can build it here. That's totally okay. Now we're going to go on to defensive setups. And the defensive setups I've got here for you are there's three. Uh, the first is the crab. And the crab is the idea is that you're just trying to kind of make sure your play team is safe uh, and you're not really giving away uh, anything in the center. Your opponent cannot kick you out of the center because all 11 of your players are in the middle uh, out of here. It is slightly vulnerable to a quick snap. Um, however, if we look at the flanks as it, as they are, blitzing any of these four players 
probably comes at a cost for your opponent. And it's the same on this side. There's no easy pickings on your team. A bit like on a crab, there's no easy pickings. Um, except for the line of scrimmage. And we're actually defending the line of scrimmage here. This is also very good for anti-fouling. Uh, they don't give away a particularly easy foul on the first turn. Uh, against high strength or anti-foul, uh, I think this is a really good setup. Next, we can go uh, low team value uh, specifically, and this is a wide setup. And the idea here is that you've bludged your group players into groups of two, and that you are threatening to attack down, uh, as we look at it here, the right-hand side. This right-hand side means that um, you're thinking about potentially going and pressing your opponent. Even with Chaos, sometimes you can do that. Um, and you're giving up the line of scrimmage so that you can go and press uh, and attack. Uh, I've put a Chaos Warrior and a Beastman in most of the little combos, apart from in here, where I've put two Chaos Warriors. And the Chaos Warriors are there because they're only movement five. And if you put them out too far out on the flanks, um, then you're going to struggle to be able to put a lot of pressure in. So I needed to keep two in here, and I've kept one here. So there's only, um, well, there's none on this far right-hand flank, and there's only one here but they are broadly in the center squares so they can go and press wherever you need them to be uh, in the first turn. This is not great for stopping a quick score. So this is a turn one type setup. So yeah, be, be aware of that. And then the final setup we've got for you here, uh, this is a sort of uh, a lowish team value um, or a anti two or three turn setup. And the idea is here is, is that you put your strength four players, one there and one there. And then we have a mirror image on the other side. The idea of this is that if your opponent wants to blitz through you and come and cause pressure, um, they've got to take through a strength four player, which of course is a lot harder to go through than a strength three player. If we imagine that we've managed to knock over number six and we just lift it out of the way for a second, look, there's no easy route through here. At least they've got to do it dodge on a three plus. Um, and if we take out number 10, uh, it's the same. In fact, it's actually worse. So the players they're going to blitz, if they're going to choose to go through the dodging route, is going to be number six and number seven and they therefore should be your two weakest players. If you want to try and stop uh, a two turn uh, in its tracks, one of the best things you can possibly do uh, is this setup, where we just take the whole thing back about three squares, and the idea is that they're going to want to actually cage here. Well, they can't cage if your players are absolutely in the way, so have them stood about halfway inside your half. Uh, you've gone too far back if they're happy to cage directly in front of you, and you've gone too far forwards if they try and cage behind you. So find that happy medium, work out where they want to put their cage and just drop your entire line literally on that point and it will become a right problem for them to deal with. You can even at this point go slightly wider and you could do that because look at that, that's a real pain for them to deal with. Um, yes, they can blitz through any singular point, but they're going to have to build a cage literally here or here. Yeah, and as Dark Elves, that's just too far forward. You cannot get people uh, down to these squares. Um, so... It's, it's a really nice screen, uh, and I've just given you some variants there. So I hope the setups help. Uh, if you've got any comments, please let me in the, light, uh, in the section below. And finally, I'm normally putting this at the end of the video, but if you would like to come and join me on Twitch, uh, I do stream every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday uh, from 7 p.m. UK time, and I also stream um, on Saturday and Sunday evenings uh, in addition. Uh, it'd be awesome if you want to come and say hello, and you can ask questions in real time. Thank you very much. See you in the next section. Right, let's look at some inducements. Uh, as usual, we're going to split the inducements pile into three different subsections. We're going to look at basic inducements, st what style player access we've got, and then whether or not we should be looking at hiring any mercenaries. First of all, looking at inducements, uh, as I'm going to call out most of the time, a bribe is definitely one of your best friends here, if you've skilled appropriately a beastman. If not, and you haven't got a dirty player, then you can also step into the mercenary tree uh, and just hire a rookie goat uh, and give it the dirty player skill. Uh, and a dirty player goat plus a, uh, a bribe will give you a little bit of firepower. However, you might actually want to consider a bribe here. And then when you go into the star player tree, we'll, we'll combine that bribe with someone in the star player tree. Overall, Bloodwiser kegs. I think the kegs add, offer great value for money. And if you've got a spare 50k, go and hire one of the kegs so you don't lose players. Bearing in mind your armor 8 on a lot of your players, sorry, armor 9 plus, then you will... Uh, potentially lose people, some of which will be really good, and you will want to get them back for the second half or the second drive. So do consider a Bloodwiser keg as a as a medium or medium upper tier inducement. Extra team retraining. No, you should be rostering three rerolls anyway, so you don't need to add a fourth. Uh, a wizard. Yeah, sure, it's uh, it's, it's going to be good. You should have some ball carrying. You should be able to slow down your opponent. And I think if you had a wizard, 
Um, you know, the fireball is still a, a viable inducement and consider that. I think that's still very strong. Uh, as usual, the bribe. I'm very much a fan of the bribe because of the meta. Again, stay away from the halfling chef. And then we've got here Plague Doctor. Uh, I think this is actually uh, a, a mistake. Um, this should actually just be a normal apothecary because there's only one player on your entire team that might potentially have regen, and that's the troll. Whereas the other X number of players you're going to have uh, don't have that. So this is a bug that Cyanide need to fix. Uh, or they need to include an actual normal uh, apothecary as well as the plague doctor you shouldn't it shouldn't be the plague doctor only bias referee as usual if you're being fouled or you think you can get fouled then this is definitely one to consider as part of a wider inducements package i wouldn't just spend 120k on this and be done um, and then these two are just also filler but i think that this is a much better piece of filler than either the cheerleader or the coach onto star players uh they've got access to i think six star players and all of six of them which is an odd one uh, it's the first guide video where I've seen all six star players actually be viable. We could absolutely find a home for all of these. So, Bile Rot Vomit Flesh, for 180k, you're getting a Strength 5 player. That's super helpful on a Strength team. Um, but we're also getting Dirty Player plus 2. So that means for 280k, we're getting a Dirty Player plus 2. And we are getting the ability to be able to foul, because we're protecting this player with a bribe. Protecting him from getting sent off um, with a bribe. So... Uh, as a low budget option for a lot of damage, the, that combination is super strong. If you get a bit more money, however, you can step into the proper version, which is the same concept, which is uh, Dirty Player plus two. Um, but now, Borak will only get sent off half of the time versus uh, Bile Rot. So this is a better combination. If you've got 360k to spend, then you should go for Borak and Dirty Player plus two, because that's just a, an awesome, awesome combination. If we're moving into a game, a single game that you just must win, then look no further than Hackflem Scuttle Spike. Hackflem is a gutter runner on a Chaos team who is just bonkers. Uh, he's got Agility 2+, plus, but he's also got uh, two heads, which means that he's effectively Edge 5, and he's also got extra arms. So again, if he's in a tackle zone, you can just give him the ball anyway, and he's still catching it on a 2+. Plus. Sadly, he doesn't have catch, so it's a little bit of an adventure trying to make that work but once it does work it's brilliant and once the get teams star players get their once per game skill then Hackflem will become absolutely out outrageous because his once per game on the tabletop is that he just walks up to someone and takes the ball off them for free no dice rolls and then he can walk off so it, he's uh he's super duper strong and in a sort of a, a knockout format Hackflem will win you the game moving on to ha uh, Helmet Wolf uh, he's okay in the Chaos team. He fills the role of a sort of a wizard. Um, and since your primary win condition is probably damage output, Helmet Wolf and a wizard are a lot closer together in terms of value. Uh, whereas on a, an elf team, for example, it's the wizard all day long. Helmet's okay. He's not top tier. Um, and he's probably a niche case. He's the weakest of the six star players you've got offered. But he's okay. And then we move on to someone um, that if you've read any or watched any of the other guide videos, you'll know. Uh, I don't like Morgan Thorpe. I think he's broken. We've got to get rid of him uh, in his current form. And that includes on the tabletop. He's broken there as well. Luckily at tabletop, he's normally house ruled out of the game um, so that he can't cause so much problems. And he's broken because he's Mighty Blow plus two skill. If you're playing against an armor seven team and you had one inducement to pick, it would be him because now you're breaking armor on a six plus, which is absolutely bonkers absolutely bonkers and the armor 17 probably can't deal with him either so he is outrageous uh if you watch the other videos you already know why so we'll move on this plays a cool idea uh, but at 170k um what have we been given we've been given a wrestle two heads tackle player so wrestle tackle two heads brilliant um doesn't have dodge though doesn't have strip ball and yeah he's okay um but he also doesn't have horns so you've got to go and put an assist in there and realistically, for 170k, I'd actually rather have this guy at 180k and lean into the killing things meta rather than the trying to play Blood Bowl meta, which is what this guy is. So he's a cool idea. He's just costed wrong versus some of the other players. Um, so I don't think you're going to see him get played much, uh, sadly. Maybe against some elves where you've got no, uh, no tackle yourself, you might see some limited choices, but broadly, uh, he's not going to get a lot of play. Overall, 
Uh, I hope that you found the whole guide video useful. If you have, please could you write, uh, uh, leave a like, subscribe. Uh, that doesn't cost you anything. And also I'd be super interested to know what your thoughts are. What was the, the best bit of the video? What was the worst bit of the video? Uh, leave a comment in the section below. If you'd like to see me play Chaos, then they will get uploaded to YouTube probably over the next couple of months. Uh, if not, come and watch me live. I stream on Twitch every Monday, sorry, every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday uh, evening from 7 p.m. or I stream on Twitch on a Saturday evening and Sunday evening from around 5 p.m. So until the next one, thank you very much. I've been Andy Devo and I'll see you soon. Thank you.